on these stations, you never know what you're going to come across. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Grizzly and Bear Overland with Lee and Steffi. We are currently on a station in remote New South Wales, working full-time Monday to Friday. In this episode, we decided to document what we'll do during our time off. Your father will be proud, mate. And how we spend our weekends out here. Here on Girraween Station, along with a lot of these, uh, these remote Australian stations, you've got new homesteads and you've also got the old homesteads. This was the original house, the original place where people lived here on the property. The previous owners of the station lived here from the 50s to the 90s. I'm always on the lookout for a certain type of vehicle, of course. And as we drove around this morning, I peeked around the back of the homestead and I have come across this. It's got a badge on the front there that's very interesting that I've just noticed. I've only just uh, come over and had a look at this thing. It says Leyland on the little badge on the front there. Lee was so excited and picked me up to have a look at this, according to us, beautiful Land Rover. We needed to have a closer look and investigate further. This Series 3 is known as a complete knockdown. From 1967 to 1978, Leyland Land Rover built them in Sullyhull, England, then shipped to Australia in crates. They were then assembled in Australia to save money on shipping and taxes. I found the problem with the engine. Someone dropped their stubby in there. Incredible. Exciting project on the go today and a long overdue project. I've got some goodies here, brand new heavy duty rear half shafts from Ashcroft and a couple of heavy duty drive flanges. Why am I putting new ones in? You may remember a couple of months ago, my very bad welding sort of bush mechanic job that I did after we stripped our old drive flange. I need to give a shout out and some credit to these legends right here, Euro 4x4. Whether it has been uh, ignition barrels in Kazakhstan, countless things, springs in Taiwan, I would say 90% of the gear that we've had sent to us that we've needed, parts, um, even service gear, as we've traveled the world has come from Euro 4x4 in France. So a massive, massive beaucoup. We couldn't do this without you guys. It's absolutely awesome. and. Everything that we have ordered has arrived so fast, it's just incredible. In fact, this particular uh, package right here came all the way from France to where I am right now, Outback, New South Wales, in under two weeks. One thing I'm gonna mention here is how impressed I am with the packaging. Heavy duty cardboard, which is actually pop riveted into the uh, shaft itself, so protecting all of those splines on there. What are you doing? So I'm just taking it out. All right, job complete. That's the installation done of the brand new. And that's our camera going out of battery. Sunday afternoon, we've had the weekend off and we're gonna to head to the town of Ivanhoe just for something to do on a Sunday afternoon. And we've noticed that everyone else here on the station, they always wash their cars before they head off the station to go into town. We're gonna to go for lunch and we're gonna have a look at the general store. So it's pretty exciting. Bloody defenders. 
we went to the pub, we went to the general store. There's not much here in this little town. I read on Wikipedia they've got a population of 196 people, but still worth a little visit. Ice cream from the general store? I guess you could stop for an ice cream and an iced coffee maybe, that's what we did here. Would I bother coming back here? Probably not. I think next time we'll go to town we'll go to, back to Poonkeri. Sometimes I wish we had aircon in this car. <laughs> really hot right now and we're about to go on a road trip, 80 kilometers. We are invited by the governess Belinda and her partner Bailey to come over for a Saturday barbecue. So they are the neighbors. It's a bit of a road trip but for here it's only down the road. We're gonna probably do the first I think 10 or 15 kilometers still on Giraween Station. It's really, really cool. And then even after that, it's all going to be off-road tracks and trails. Gate B. <laughs> Gate B. I don't know. You said it, not me. I was just going to say this is the rules of the bush. Passenger, if you've got one, is always on gate duty. One of the big rules of the bush. And another rule of the bush is we always leave the gate as we found it. All right, we've arrived at Manfred Station and I tell you what, that was a rough road. The last 20 kilometers was horrendous and Belinda does that every single day, a 160 kilometer round trip. This is our friend Belinda and this is our partner, Bailey. They manage the next door station. They live full time there and looked after the owners, land and homestead. Bele took us for a drive around the massive property. We even saw some emus and we went all the way to a beautiful lake before returning home to a beautiful roast dinner. Around and then we go from there back. So when you're like first trying to crack a whip, you yeah. always wear like an Akubra mm -hmm. and then so it doesn't like get your face because you get welts and stuff from the whip. So who taught you how to use that? I learned at a B&S one time. <laughs> What's a B&S? You got to explain to me what a B&S because a lot of people are gonna, not going to know what a B&S is. A bachelor's and spinster's ball. So it's sort yeah. of like a bush party where like a heap of country people show up in their yeah. youth. Belinda one, is teaching two. Steffi how to Thank use you. a stockman's no? whip. <laughs> I can see myself losing an eye here. No. Nah, nah. We spent the night over there before returning to our station the following day. It's an exciting weekend. It's Saturday morning. It's been four weeks. It's gone so fast. We need fresh supplies. We're craving some fresh fruit and vegetables. So we're gonna make the massive 500 kilometer round trip. We're gonna explore Mildura, which is a very famous historical town right on the border uh, of Victoria and New South Wales. We are going to be meeting up with a very good friend of mine that I haven't seen for 19 years. His name's Gaz. Now Gaz used to work for my dad. Gary introduced me to Land Rovers way before I had the passion, the addiction. And I'll never forget being in the trench there with my shovel one day, probably at 14 or 15 years old. And Gary introducing me to the Land Rover wave. He said, all Land Rover drivers, no matter what vehicle, will wave to each other on the road. Now I didn't believe a word of what he was telling me. I said, whatever Gaz, 25 years later, we've got a Land Rover and Gaz, you were absolutely right. That's always a little bit risky business trying to climb over barbed wire, especially when you've got only one wire to hold on to. But we just had to quickly check the other station hand, Luke, our good friend's dog's water, because he's away in Broken Hill for the weekend. He left yesterday. Where's he away? Well, oh, he's on a date. <laughs> we're going to go and check his other little dog too, the schnitzel, who's a little sausage dog. 
make sure uh, she's only a little one. She needs a little uh, company, so we're gonna go check she's all right, and then we're out of here. We are now in Punkari. This was about an hour drive. I don't know, I was asleep. On the dirt. 110 kilometers. Now this is bitumen. We need to put the pressure back on the tires. Three, two, one. Welcome to Victoria. Officially my first time in Victoria. I'm excited to go to Kema and Coles, whatever, but I'm sure we're gonna go there and I'm gonna freak out because it's gonna be people everywhere. One month out of the city and civilization. I didn't miss it to be honest. <laughs> We've been as remote as you can be in New South Wales probably for a whole month. Now all of a sudden we're in Mildura which is a decent sized town. There's traffic and cars and bloody stop signs and red lights and I'm flipping out a little bit. First stop is the up shop. <laughs> we love up shops. Lee needs some new shirts because the one he got a month ago, they all ripped apart. We saw next door this really cool Asian supermarket. Of course, we love Asian supermarkets. We lived for a long time in Asia. Walking around the aisles and all the products, everything. Oh, remember this, remember that. And that's why, I mean, travel is such a beautiful thing. We're just having so many memories flooding back of our time in South Korea, Japan, and of course, Taiwan. We want to do something special out at the station and cook a Korean barbecue. Obviously, we can get all the good stuff in here. And I've also been raving and telling the guys on the station about our little secret, the soy sauce and vanilla ice cream. They're not sure about it. I said, you just wait. I got the kimchi and the paste. Oh, that's another favorite. We are down on the Murray River now. This is the border, as we've mentioned before. We came from New South Wales, and this is Steffi's first time in Victoria. We did mention that. We're on our way to the farmer's market, and then we're going to find somewhere to have lunch. Oh, yeah, I'm starving. I'm starving too. Let's go. It's 20 past 12, and the market is finished. It's over. Everybody's packing up. We missed it. <laughs> Next time. Bloody hell. <laughs> Unbelievable. Sunday morning and it's time for our massive shop again to last us for an in, another entire month out on the station. We had a fantastic afternoon yesterday catching up with my old workmate and friend Gaza. He was so very nice to let us stay in that little caravan over there. We're going to head back now into Mildura city centre probably go to, I don't know what Steffi's got planned actually. She's got her list. Steffi loves her list. I've got my list. We are on the way to the supermarket. No grizzly today, so we've got a massive esky that we borrowed from the station. Ah, oh, chocolate resupply. <laughs> We're very lucky it's not a hot day today. It's actually quite cool here in Mildura. All of our dry sort of produce will go on the back seats. Chock full. That's it, our little exciting road trip. I wouldn't say little, 500 kilometer round trip, but I guess it's a little uh, road trip out in this, in this part of the world. It's over, but yeah, it's good to be back now. Steffi will jump into action, do what she loves to do, organize. Licorice! A memory of Taiwan. We were drinking a lot of this when we were attempting our hikes throughout Taiwan, the whole length of Taiwan. So we thought we'll have a little memory. We have a special fridge for this one. It's gone into quarantine. <laughs> He's gone into isolation because it absolutely stinks. And here you have it, my friends. A happy Frenchie with a fridge full of good stuff. Tonight we're having a Korean barbecue. I've got pineapple, garlic, onion, soy sauce, lettuce, kimchi. What else? You're forgetting the main ingredient. Ah, and the meat, of course. We've been talking about doing this Korean barbecue now for well, four weeks. We've got a guest coming over, Luke, our mate, the other station hand here. Annyeonghaseyo! Annyeonghaseyo! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> First Korean barbecue, Luke? First one ever. First time on the chopsticks? Yep. And then you wrap it. 
That's a guy. Success! That was really good. Oh no! It's made in Australia! No, why? She's got no makeup, I'm not supposed to film. She's hiding. <laughs>